if she's touching one of these things, so if she's touching the bread or if she's touching the pencil, we'll have it play that little scream sound effect. <laughs> what I want to work on today is making a sort of two-player Pong game. So we'll have like a paddle on this side and we'll have a goal on this side here. And the objective of the game is going to be to prevent the like ball from hitting the goal with your little Pong paddle and like reflecting it back at the other person. And then they'll have to do the same thing. And so like one of you will control with like W and S and the other one will control with the arrow keys. It'll be cool. It'll be good. So uh, let's get started on that and hope things don't go absolutely off the wall as they tend to do when I make projects without a tutorial to guide me. So let's start out by naming the game. Uh, let's, how do you spell Palooza? Google doesn't recognize this as a word. That's okay. Excellent. Now, moving on, let's start setting up our game here. So the first thing we need is not a cat. I need better sprites than a cat. So we'll go to, and actually all I want are straight lines. So I might just draw them myself. Uh, but let's see what they have here. Yeah, I want like this. No, I don't. I want one of the paddles to be a pencil. And... We'll go ahead and add the other paddle, a piece of bread. <laughs> Excellent. So now if you notice, these paddles aren't actually really correctly positioned or sized. So I'm going to go into their costumes here. I'm going to delete this extra costume. We don't need it. And I'm going to do some stuff to it here. So the first thing I want to do is select. If I have the select tool and go around the whole thing, I can turn it because I want it to be straight up and down. There we go. And I actually want this one to be a little smaller too, I think. So we'll uh, click on these sides. You can click on the sides of it here to shrink it. And you can click on the sides here to like shrink it, shrink its width. There we go. We can do something like that. I like that. And then we need to do the same thing for the bread. So if we go over to the bread, it needs to be facing the other direction. Or like this. And then we'll make it, this one needs to get a little longer and a little skinnier. Long bread. There we go. That's about right. Awesome. And you want to put these guys, remember, always put these right on the center. There's these little center marks here. That's where we want to put these. We want to put these, get these, the center of them right on the center. All right. So there we go. We have our paddles. We'll put one on this side and we'll put one on this side. Now we want to be able to control these paddles with our arrow keys. I could do that by using the when pressed button in, in events. But I want to show you what happens if I use the when pressed. So we could do something like when pressed up arrow and when pressed down arrow. And then we could do change Y by 10 and then change Y by negative 10. But the problem with that is that I have to click every single time to make it happen. I'd rather it just go up or yeah, I can hold it down, but there's like a weird delay. Like I click the button and that takes a second to start going down. I click the button and it takes a second to start moving. Or I just have to click all the time. And both of those are not very good options. I'd rather just whenever I have the mouse down, whenever I have the up arrow key down, it's just constantly moving. So we're gonna do something a little different. So the first thing we're gonna need is a repeat until. And a repeat until is in your controls. It's right down here at the bottom. We're going to repeat this change Y by 10 until we are no longer holding down the up arrow key. So it starts when we press the up arrow key and then it keeps just keeps going until we stop holding it down. So to do that in operators, we have something called not. So we're going to put that right here. And in sensing, we have we can test if a key is pressed. So key up arrow is pressed. So now what this is going to do is we're going to say when we press the up arrow, it'll start this loop. And then it will repeat, this loop will keep happening, changing Y by 10, until the up arrow key is not pressed anymore. So if you look at this, there you go. That's what happens. Now you need to do the down arrow the same way. Remember, you can copy code by right-clicking and saying duplicate. And then we want it to be change Y by negative to go down. Oh, I, do you see the mistake, guys? I made this one down arrow, but I didn't make this one down arrow. There we go. 
That looks great. That's awesome looking motion. Now, actually, I want basically this code on both of them. So I'm going to drag these two over to the bread also. Except the pen needs to be controlled with W and D instead. So we can have two players. So let's switch this to W and W. And this one's going to be D or S, sorry, S and S. Great. Now both of these things can move. Let's create the goals in the back. So the goals are the things where if we hit them, we're going to actually score a point on our opponent. So let me look for some goals. Okay, I've got it. So if we go to costumes, one of our goals is just going to be a, a line of tacos. Let's group that all together. All right. So I'm going to turn it sideways again, and then I need to shrink it down a lot because they're going to go right here. They're going to fit behind the pencil. Now I need more than one of them. So what you can do is you can click on these and you can copy them right here and click this button to copy and then you can paste them. There you go. Now I have another taco. I can start building out my goal here. Best pong game. 10 out of 10. <laughs> there, there we go. There's our goal. <laughs> our goal is all these tacos. And then on the other side, we'll do... You know what? Let's be normal for just once in my life here. We're just going to do a line. Other side's a line. <laughs> one, one side is a taco goal, and the other is just a, just a normal line. So we can also change this like this. We can rotate it here. We don't have to rotate it in the, uh, in the sprite. There we go. And we'll just drag it to here. Awesome. Looks good. All right, there we go. We have our we have the basics of our game here. We have our, our bread defending the line and a pencil defending the tacos. Let's actually bring the bread in just a little bit more here. There we go. Um, yeah, there we go. I like that. That looks, that looks fun. Okay, so now over on the bread, I actually forgot to move these. Let's separate these out a little bit so I can see what's going on. And then the next thing I want to add is uh, the ball, I think. We need a ping pong ball to bounce in between these. So the way we're going to do that is if we go to sprites, we're going to choose something that can be our ball. So, hmm, yeah, a sane person would choose the basketball or the baseball or the thing literally just called ball. Uh, I'm going to choose something else. Oh, perfect. This is, this is just perfect. All right. So... <laughs> I'm going to go into costumes and I'm going to uh, delete everything but this person's head. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to put it right in the center. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. <laughs> we have ourselves a ping pong ball. I'm going to get rid of these. We don't need, the, we don't need bodies. Oh, uh, one more thing. Let's make her, uh, she looks a little happy right now to be a ping pong ball. Let's uh, ungroup here and let's turn that smile upside down. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Next up, we need to add some actual motion to this ball so it's not just sitting still doing nothing here. So if we go to motion, I know I've been telling you guys to move the change X and change Y by. Uh, that's because move 10 steps, it does something a little bit different. It doesn't move it just left or right or just up and down. It moves it in whatever direction it's pointing. So if I do move 10 steps right now, it'll move forward. But if I take uh, our head here of Danny and I rotate it and I say move 10 steps, now it's going to move diagonally because it just moves in whatever direction it's pointing. So let's start with, uh, we'll pull back in our move 10. Uh, and then we will grab a forever because we're going to forever move. Uh, it's going to start when we click start. And we're going to have it bounce when it hits the edge. So if you go to motion, there's this little thing called if on edge bounce. So we're going to add that. See how that looks. There we go. Now she's bouncing. Right now, our little Danny head just bounces off of these two walls. Uh, but we want her to also be able to bounce off of the paddles, right? We want our paddles to be able to block her. So we're going to add a little bit of code to do that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say when we click start, we're going to go to control and choose forever. And then we are going to have an if statement in here. And what we're going to do, what this is going to do is it's forever going to check if something is true. So what we want to check is if we are touching the bread, 
but not just the bread because we could also be touching the pencil right both of those things should make it bounce but i can't put both of them in here so the way we can fix this is in operators there's something called an or so you can put this or in here and now if we're touching the pencil or if we're touching the bread we can do something and the thing we want to do is have the danny head turn back around the way we're going to do that is by using one of these turns right here and if you turn 180 degrees that's going to do the same thing as if on edge bounce it's going to turn it like right around in the opposite direction but we don't want it to just turn around in the opposite direction because that's kind of boring look what happens here it just goes back and forth in the exact same spot over and over again which isn't a very interesting game we want it to be a little bit random so what we're going to do is we're going to go to operators and we're going to grab this pick random number and instead of just being 180 degrees we'll let it be something between 170 and 190. so go plus or minus a little bit it can so there's some there's some variance finally if we just let it go right now she'll get stuck on the pencil so what we want to do is also add a little move 15 or 10 here i think 10 will be enough there we go so let's reset danny real quick and see how this works Nope, that's the wrong one. Awesome. There we go. We've got a very basic Pong game. All right, we've got a few more things to do before we have a complete game here. So first off, we need there to actually be a score, right? And we probably want two scores. We probably want a score for the pencil and a score for the bread. So I'm going to go down to variables. And I'm going to make two variables. We'll make bread score. And we'll make pencil score great so we'll put the pencil score next to the pencil and we'll put the bread score next to the bread and then right in the middle we'll also create a variable time so the game doesn't go on forever and the time i'm going to make it a large one and we'll put it right in the middle there nice so next we have to have all these variables actually do something now when the game starts everybody's score is going to be set to zero so if we go over to events in the pencil and click when we click start we can go to variables and set the variable score to zero for the pencil. Pencil score zero. Now we want to start checking if the if our little Danny head here, if our ball is touching the pencil. Every time it does touch the pencil, we want to score a point. Well, we actually already have the code to do that in the Danny head here. So what we can do is reformat this a little bit. So now we need two different if statements, right? Originally, it didn't matter if it was touching the pencil or if it was touching the bread. The code was going to do the exact same thing, which was turn around and move 10 steps. Now we need to actually separate these things a little bit. So what we need to do is if we're touching the pencil, then we're still going to turn around and move 10 steps. But now we also need to change the pencil's score by one. We need to increase it by one. And then we need to add another if statement here. Control if where if we're touching the bread, we do all these same things, but instead we change the bread score by one. We can get rid of this little or here. Awesome. Let's see if that works. There, one. <laughs> the other thing we want to do is if these, if the Danny head here touches one of these back walls, we want to lose a lot of points, right? We really, the whole goal is to have it not touch these back walls. So let's try and add that real quick. We can do something very similar. If we just copy all of this code here, we can change this. So instead of touching pencil, it's touching line goal or taco goal. So this will be taco goal. This one will be line goal. If we touch the taco goal, we want to change the pencil score by, let's say like minus five. And if we touch the, I made them the same thing, didn't I? This one's taco goal. This one will be line goal. And if we're touching the line goal, this red thing back here, then we'll change the bread score by minus five because they failed to protect their goal. Let's make sure that works. Great. That's exactly what I wanted. No, I forgot to reset the bread score. Look, the bread score stays negative one. So let's reset the bread score. Bread score zero. All right. Now they both reset. Finally, we need to add time here. So we actually have like a countdown happening. Uh, so to do that, if you'll remember, we've done timers a few times now. We're going to add the when click start. And then we're going to repeat until the time is equal to zero. So we're going to create our with our variable time here. We need to set it set 
time to however long we want to give them. I'm going to say we want to give 60 seconds. And we're going to repeat until that variable time is equal to zero. So repeat until time is equal to zero. And what we're going to repeat is wait one second. Whoop. Oh my gosh. There we go. Wait one second and change time by minus one. Change time by minus one. There we go. And at the very end of all that, we want to stop all. The game is over after this. We'll stop the whole thing. There we go. We've got a game on our hands. It just... God. It just isn't enough. I, I have to make it... I have to make it crazier. This is too boring. I'm sorry. Here it goes. I think it's about time we add some actual sound to this. And one of the sounds I really want to add is having the sound when Danny's head hits something. I want her to like make a screaming sound because I feel like it would hurt to just like hit your head on pencils and tacos all the time. So let's see if we can find something like that. Uh, scream. Ow! <laughs> oh. Ow! That's just perfect. Oh boy, all right. So now in our code, every time Danny hits something, like uh, like one of these paddles, let's have her let's have her play that little scream sound. So we're gonna go to start sound and choose scream one. And then we're gonna say if she's touching one of these things, so if she's touching the bread or if she's touching the pencil, we'll have it play that little scream sound effect. Ow! <laughs> Moving on. Ow! Okay. Ow! <laughs> I can't focus while she's making those screaming noises. All right, stop the game. Next up, um, let's add a sound for when she touches one of the goals, like she touches the taco. Uh, let's make a, let's do a, uh, I know there's a crunch sound effect, like she took a bite of it. Chomp, there we go. Um, so now we're gonna start the sound, chomp, whenever she touches the taco goal. And if she touches the lion goal, uh, let's see, we'll play that one. So when she touches the other goal, we'll play laser two. Touching the lion goal, she'll play laser two. And we'll try that out real quick. There we go. Chomp, nice. <laughs> and screaming, of course. Well, it wouldn't be a game without screaming. I also forgot to add a backdrop. So let's do that real quick. See if we can find a good one here. No, I want it to be in space. There we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is how you make a game. Um, I have to fix that. Okay. I don't know, guys. It's still not enough. Let's see if we can find some background music to add. If we go to backdrops and we click on sounds, let's see if we have a good loop we can choose. I can work with this. All right. So now in our code for the backdrop, we'll just have that, that'll be like our background sound. It'll just play all the time. So to do that, we're gonna say, when we click start, we're going to forever play sound, dance, celebrate until done. There we go. Now we have, now we have a game, An actual background music. I don't know, I think we could still do more. Let's see. I think that every 20 seconds, we should add another head to the game, and we should increase the speed of the music so it's playing faster. That's my pitch. Let's see if we can do that. So first off, to increase the speed of the music, we're gonna take this Dance Celebrate one and duplicate it, and I'll call it uh, Dance Faster. And then we can click right here. We can speed it up by clicking this faster button. There we go. Nice. And then we'll do it one more time. We'll duplicate it again and we'll do it, make it much faster. Yes, excellent. Dance fastest. So now we don't want to just play the sound dance celebrate forever. What we want to do is 
repeat it as long as our time is greater than 40. When our time equals 40, we're gonna switch to a different one. So let's do this. We'll say repeat, we're gonna repeat this sound, the first one, until time is equal to 40. Until time is equal to 40. So 20 seconds have passed. And then we're gonna play the next one until time is equal to 20 which is dance faster. And then finally, until the game stops, so forever, we're going to repeat the last one, dance fastest until the end of the game. There we go, there's a nice little repeat thing. We'll, we'll make sure it works in just a second here. There's a few more things I wanna add. So the other thing I wanted to change was I wanted there to be more than one head bouncing around. So to do that, we're going to click on Danny, and I don't want to recreate all of this code I put in here, because the code for all of these different heads is going to be about the same. So what I'm going to do is right-click on her and click Duplicate, and then I'm going to do that one more time. We'll add a ball every we'll add a ball every 20 seconds. So we'll add one at 40, we'll add one at 20. So we'll take Danny 2 and go to Costumes, and I think I want it to be a different head, so let's choose someone else to decapitate. Who is my next victim? It's going to be you. Look at that face. How can I not... How can I not use this head? That's what I was looking for. What a nice head. We'll put him right in the middle. Like that. And we'll make him a little bigger. His head's kind of small, so we need to make it the same size as Danny's. And we'll haul, and he's he's not called Danny, he's called D. So we'll rename him to D. We have Danny, we have D, and let's do one more. Sorry, you have no idea what's about to happen to you, what your head's gonna be used for. Good enough. There we go, there's our three heads. The other thing I wanna do is go over to their sounds and I wanna change their screams so we have different screams for each one of them. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to choose, I think there was a male scream. There we go. Uh, oops, scream two. And scream two. And then for her, we're going to choose the other scream. I think it was a female scream. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's screech, actually. No, this is going to be so awful. All right, let's see. Finally, we need to have these heads only show up after like so much time has passed. So to do that, we're going to go over to our events again, and we're going to choose when click start. And now when we click start, D's head here is actually supposed to be hidden. So we're going to go to looks, and we can go over to hide and choose hide. And then we can go to uh, control. And the very top one is wait. So we're going to have him wait for 20 seconds. And then we're going to show him. There you go. We'll do the same thing for Danny. So I'll copy it. Or wait, you're not called Danny. What's your name? Ruby. You're called Ruby. We'll delete the Danny head. Let's rename her to Ruby. All right. And then we're going to have Ruby. Ruby is going to wait for a little bit longer. Ruby is going to wait for 40 seconds before she shows up. So that as the game continues, we have more and more heads joining in. All right, let's play it. Ah, the weirdest thing is I'm playing against myself. So this is all kind of like completely irrelevant. Oh no, here we go. It's getting close to 40. Oh, here they come. <laughs> oh! This is, this is it's even stupider than I hoped. Here's Ruby. That was pretty great, but we do have a problem here. Notice the speed of the music actually never changed, and it was supposed to. So the problem is, 
The problem is a little complicated to explain. It really comes down to the fact that we need to use these less thans instead of equals. The, I'll explain the reason real quick, but if you don't get it, don't worry too much about it. The reason is that when this play sound until done happens, the play sound until done, like, this is all that's happening for the whole time that, like, until the song is done playing, this is the only command that's running. Which means it might be, we might go from 41 seconds, and then this starts playing, and then it goes to 40, and then it goes to 39, and then it goes to 38, but the sound is still playing. And then it comes back and checks if it's equal to 40, but it never saw 40 happen, right? We skipped right past it and went to 38. So what we need to do is instead of doing equals, we need to use one of these little greater than less than operators. So we need to check if the time is greater than 40. We'll stay on that one. And now for this one, if the time is greater than 20, we'll stay on that one. Oh, I did it backwards. Ha! <laughs> if time is less than 20, or time is less than 40. There we go. All right, let's try it out again. You know, this whole idea sounded so not crazy when I started it. Like, oh, I'm just gonna make a two player ping pong game. That'll be normal. Like, how can I mess that up? And now we have just like screaming heads and, and bread and tacos and pencils. And you know, it's really got away from me. And that. And Danny heads and. and there he is. Oh my god. The music is so stressful. Oh, the music's about to speed up again. I can't even talk. It's just this is too much. Oh, I'm almost out of time. Oh, the bread wins. The pencil had a huge lead in the very beginning, but it lost it all. Alright guys, thanks for making this game with me, um... <laughs> I had fun. I hope you did too. Uh, happy game making. <laughs>